Good morning. This is uh, Thursday, June 23rd, and I'd like to begin by wishing uh, Jimmy and Justina Murray a happy anniversary. I think it's 16 years. I'm not positive, but I think it's 16. Uh, hope you kids have a great anniversary day together and you go out and do something special. We love you guys. You're, you're a valuable part of our church family, and we have uh, grown to uh, look at you as, as family. So God bless you kids, and I hope you have a great anniversary. Today's uh, devotion is acquainted with grief. It's Isaiah 53. He is, Jesus, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We are not acquainted with grief in the same way our Lord was acquainted with it. We endure it, and we live through it, but we do not become intimate with it as he did. At the beginning of our lives, we do not bring ourselves to the point of dealing with the reality of sin. We look at life through the eyes of reason and say that if a person will control his instincts and get plenty of education, then they can produce a life that will slowly evolve into a life like God. But as we continue on through life, we find the presence of something which we have not yet taken into account, namely sin. And that sin upsets all of our thinking and all of our plans. And sin has made the fountain of our thinking unpredictable, uncontrollable, and irrational in our actions. And I, as I read that, I reflected back on how many men and women I have known in the ministry and in, in the Air Force and in many other walks of life who were doing very well educationally, uh, financially, and they, they succumbed to sin and their lives were destroyed. We have to recognize that sin is a fact of life, not just a shortcoming. Sin is a blatant mutiny against God, and either sin or God must die in our lives. The New Testament brings us right down to this one issue. If sin rules in me, God's life in me will be killed. If God rules in me, then sin in me will be killed. There's nothing more fundamental than that. The culmination of sin was the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That's why Isaiah wrote him as a man of sorrows. He was dealing intimately with sin once and for all. And that was true in the history of God on earth. We also will also in God, God on earth will also be true. It will also be true in the history of our lives. <clears throat> that is, sin will kill the life of God within us. We must mentally bring ourselves to terms with the fact of sin. It is the only explanation why Jesus Christ came to earth, and it is the explanation of the grief and sorrow of life. The challenge I have for us today in regards to sin is what we can do. And in that answer, you need to look up Romans 12, 1 through 2. That's your challenge. Look up Romans 12, 1 through 2, and let me know what you find. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that Jesus... Uh, bore it all upon the cross. Isaiah prophesied that he would become a man of sorrows. And Father, the sorrow of that day was our sins that he carried on the cross. So we thank you that he has taken that in hand and made a way for us to come through salvation and uh, find eternal life. So Lord, today, as we would read Romans 12, 1 and 2, we would honestly ask ourselves if that's us. We love you, Father, and we give you this day in Christ's name. Amen. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.